screen and uh, okay uh, i'm going to share my screen and uh, let me know if uh, you guys um, can see it uh, can you all see the screen now hello Uh, can everyone see the screen? No, sir. Uh, let me see again. Uh, uh, now? Yes. Okay. So, uh, our today's topic um, is going to be radiobiology. Um, uh, and radiation oncology. Uh, as Jawad introduced me, my name is Muhammad Ali Shah, and uh, currently I am working in Cedar Rapids and uh, Dubuque, uh, two cities in Iowa State. Uh, today, uh, I don't have any disclaimers. Uh, I do not represent any vendors or software companies. So uh, any mention of equipment or software will be for educational purposes only, and I will not be endorsing or recommending the use of any software or any tools. Uh, on the same note, if anyone, if you need any help or uh, want to discuss any software or tools with me, they can definitely do uh, on my private email uh, and my cell phone. You are most welcome. So um, I thought because uh, the end product of our discussions will be to, uh, get to know about our decay calculations and then um, uh, know about alpha beta ratios. Uh, so I uh, thought to start with decay calculations, uh, then we will touch alpha beta ratios a little bit. And then we will start from the basics, uh, run around a whole 360 degrees and come back to decay calculations and uh, alpha beta ratios. If you have any questions in the meanwhile, uh, please feel free to stop me and ask your questions. Uh, one of my main um, objects would be to concepts. So you guys have concepts and you can clearly discuss with your colleagues uh, the things that we discussed today and tomorrow, inshallah. And uh, you can have confidence uh, what you are talking about. So for decay cal uh, delay calculations, um, we are talking about the delays here when patients uh, go on a break the break can be some other disease. Uh, the patient may be unfortunately suffering from some other disease and cannot come to the hospital for treatment, or there may be some severe reactions to the skin or, or some other reactions that the radiation oncologist uh, want to send patient for uh, arrest. So um, the, de uh, the delay calculations that I'm going to talk about uh, is the gap concept introduced in time dose fractionation and uh, inshallah we will touch these uh, later the equation for uh, decay calculation uh, delay calculation sorry i wrote decay here it's delay <laughs> sorry for these mistakes so it's t divided by t plus g power 0.11 um, here in this equation t is the number of elapsed days so elapsed days, remember, are the days uh, that includes weekends when the patient does not get treatment. So if a patient start treatment Monday, get five days treatment, and then is off Saturday and Sunday, so we have elapsed days of seven or six, depending you start from uh, Tuesday as the first elapsed day. And then G is the, G is the number of rest days when the patient is off. So here, when we are counting G, we will not include the, the days when patient was under treatment. We will exclude these days and we will start counting from the day when the, the first day patient went on rest. So if patient, for example, uh, got eight treatments and then went on rest. So after the eighth treatment, G will be the first day and so on. G is the number of rest days or the days that patient missed. So here uh, I have an example. Um, a patient uh, is prescribed with a dose of 180 centigrade per fraction for 25 fractions. 
patient received eight fractions uh, with LS days of 12 and then had 28 days of rest. So calculate the decay in this case. Uh, so we can see that the plain dose was 180 and uh, 25 fractions. So the total prescribed dose was 4,500 centigrade. Um, and uh, as our problem shows, a uh, patient got um, treatment for eight days and elapsed days are 12. And then the rest days are 28 for which the patient didn't show. Now remember for this delay calculation, uh, we talk about elapsed days and rest days. We don't talk about the number of fractions. The important thing are uh, elapsed days and rest days. So when we calculate this according to the equation um, uh, that I uh, have written here on, the, uh, on this previous uh, slide, when we calculate, we get 0.876. So this will be, again, um, uh, I have written a decay, uh, it will be delay. <laughs> I was kind of confusing between alpha decay. Uh, I was discussing with my colleague the same day when I was preparing this slide. So uh, please read it as delay. Um, so now, now the dose delivered is um, 180 times eight. It will be 180 times eight. Uh, sorry for these mistakes, guys. <laughs> Some funny mistakes. So 180 times eight will be 1440 centigrade. And the decay factor that we just calculated, uh, when we apply that decay factor to um, our dose that the patient has already received, we get a 1261.44 centigrade of dose. That means after 28 rest days, the actual effect of the dose would be equal to this dose instead of this dose. So after the break, the effect of the dose is 1261 centigrade. So we will subtract this 1261 centigrade from the dose delivered and we get uh, 178.56 or 179 centigrade. That means we have to deliver 179 centigrade to, to patient in addition to the prescribed dose. So now the total dose will be uh, 4679 instead of 4500 with the same BED. Here you can discuss with physician that uh, if you want to add a separate day, uh, a 26th day of fraction, so to deliver this day, or to deliver this dose, or you want to split this dose uh, among the remaining fractions and increase the dose per fraction so the patient can get this remaining dose. So this is the concept of uh, uh, calculating the dose when the patient has a gap in the treatments. Any questions so far? Uh, no questions means good. I am <laughs> really doing good. We will take Sorry, the uh, question ahead. at the end of, we will take the question at the end of the- At the end? Discussion. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I have shared this Excel sheet with Asad. Um, uh, can you all see this Excel sheet? Uh, uh, is it, uh, can you see the Excel sheet that I am showing on my screen now? No, sir, um, we cannot see, no. we only see the lectures. You can, oh, okay, uh, let me go back to, okay, so I need to learn how to use my software. <laughs> okay, um, I, um, I have um, shared uh, an Excel sheet with Asad, he, and I have asked him to email you, that to all of you. In that Excel sheet, um, uh, it's kind of uh, uh, for the, these calculations. So all you have to do in the Excel sheet is uh, put in uh, the days. Um, let me look at it myself. Um, so I can tell you uh, what the, the, the inputs that the Excel sheet will require are the dose per fraction and number of fractions, uh, then the number of treatment delivered and the number of elapsed days and the total number of rest days. So these are a few things that the Excel sheet will um, ask you for, and then uh, it will calculate everything else for you. 
all the entry section in the Excel sheet are highlighted with light green. So, and the Excel sheet is locked, but there is no password. So when you go in uh, uh, at the top, Excel has an option of review. And when you click on review, there is an option of unprotect sheet. So whenever you click on that unprotect sheet, this sheet will be unprotected and you will be able to see the equations uh, if you want to see the equations or change it. Uh, so there is no password. Uh, and when you click on unprotect sheet, the Excel sheet will be unprotected. Uh, I have uh, two sections in that. One is for gap calculations and the other one is for alpha beta calculations that we are going to discuss next. So um, if you have any questions regarding that Excel sheet, uh, please feel free, uh, um, as I always said, uh, please feel free to contact me for anything uh, uh, you guys have. If you guys have any problem in the clinic or if you need any uh, personal suggestions, personal recommendations, if I can do something, I will definitely do that. Sir, Moving on, uh, linear quadratic equation. Oh, sure. Kamal Shah, Mr. Kamal Shah want to repeat the last slide. If, you, if possible for you, the decay calculation last slide. Uh, sure. Last slide, uh, this one? Mm, no, I think the previous, yes, so, this one. This one? Or, oh, the, I think yes, there is, this one, this one. I think there is some delay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think there is some delay when I'm changing my screens uh, and it is getting shared with you guys. So uh, in this sheet, um, the dose delivered as you, um, uh, if you rem uh, remember uh, in our problem, uh, we discussed that the dose delivered to the patient was 180 centigrade for eight fractions. So that will become 1440 centigrade. Um, but then the patient went on break of 28 days. So because of 28 days, we calculated a decay uh, or a delay factor uh, and um, the delay factor was 0 0.876. So 1440 times 0 0.876, this becomes 1261 centigrade, 1261.44 to be exact. So this means that instead of 1440 centigrade, because of the 28 days gap, patient, those actual effect will be this much of 1261 centigrade. So we can subtract this 1,261 from 1,440. And we will get, uh, if we round it up, we get 179 centigrade. So this means patient missed about 179 centigrade of his, of his or her treatment. Um, so we can uh, sit with our physician colleagues and discuss that either we add another fraction to the treatment and give this dose or we can split this dose uh, on the remaining fractions. So in this case, we are going up to 25 and patient has received eight. So there are 17 more fractions. So we can, in, in this example case, we can um, distribute this dose on 17 fractions, 179 by 17, uh, whatever the result is, we can add that dose to 180 and deliver that increased dose daily. So uh, to compensate for the gap. And now we will be delivering this dose in addition to the 4,500 centigrade that we initially planned. Uh, any, uh, uh, any specific thing that you all want to discuss in this slide? No, sir, we can, we can, sir. We are good, okay. So I think uh, once I change the slide, uh, I will wait a couple of seconds uh, because there is a lag uh, in the updating of uh, slides on your guys' side. So now um, um, I will discuss the linear quadratic equation. And as I said, uh, uh, based on these uh, equations, we will solve problems uh, as we did on delay equation. And then we will start discussing radiobiology and we will come 360 degrees, 360 degrees around back to these equations after we discuss the different terms involved in these equations and clear our concepts. So if you guys want, we, we, we can come back to these problems tomorrow and see that when you have a, a clearer view of these, uh, 
uh, how these work. But the reason I started with these uh, equations in the beginning was um, Asad told me that we will have a diverse um, audience today uh, from professionals to students. Mm -hmm. So it, it, sorry, go ahead, Jawad. Uh, sir, sir uh, Amir Mansur sahab is asking what is delay factor and how to calculate. So I think we have discussed this thing in the previous slides. Uh, oh, did Amir, uh, did Amir just joined or was? Maybe, I am not sure about. He asked this question, what is delay factor and how to calculate? Okay, I Amir, uh, yeah, let me come back. Uh, we just discussed those slides. So uh, let me come back to this in the end of the discussion. So uh, yes, once I, we, we uh, luck to yeah. have question at the end of the session. Yeah, so the once session. we wrap up, uh, I will come back to the, this, these beginning slides. So um, for linear quadratic equation, um, biological equivalent dose, which will be in gray, um, is equal to N D and then we have one plus D divided by alpha beta ratio. So these terms, this is the equation um, we, uh, you may have heard in the clinics and uh, st those students uh, among you who are in, working in radiobiology, they may have heard of this equation. And in this lecture, uh, we will come back to this. So here BED is biologically equivalent dose in gray. Alpha beta ratio is dose. So the unit will be gray. Usually alpha beta is three gray for late effects and 10 gray for acute reactions and tumor response. So we can use 10 for tumor whenever we are using this equation. And again, this equation is in the Excel sheet that uh, will be forwarded to you. So uh, alpha beta can be used as 10 and alpha beta can be uh, used as three for normal tissue and 10 for uh, tumor. N is the number of fractions. The, the, now this time, N is the number of planned fractions. So for example, if we think that patient was prescribed 180 centigrade in 25 fractions, so this is 25 fractions. So do not confuse the equation that we discussed in the delay calculations and the equation uh, of linear quadratic. This number is now number of fractions. And D will be again those in gray, uh, which is this D. So um, a problem, uh, a treatment uh, is designed to deliver 25 fractions at two gray. So remember uh, in the equation, we will talk of gray, but then in the Excel sheet, um, I have used centigrade and I have corrected the centigrade to gray in the equation. So if you uh, are using my Excel sheet that I have forwarded to you, you can enter the dose in centigrade or you have to enter the dose in centigrade because I have corrected it uh, to grays. So in this example, now we are talking about uh, 25 fractions uh, and two gray of dose per fraction. And then um, in the clinic, uh, we want to change the dose instead of two gray to 1.6 gray or 160 centigrade per fraction. So then how many fractions should we deliver? So the two doses, 200 centigrade and 160 centigrade have an equal effect on the patient. So in this case, we will use this equation twice. First, we have to find the BED for 200 centigrade and BED 200 centigrade or two gray. So in this case, again, in the problem, uh, we have 25 fractions and the dose uh, D is two gray and uh, alpha beta ratio, as I said, for tumor, we will use an alpha beta ratio of 10. Uh, so now when we put these values in our linear quadratic, quadratic equation uh, uh, that uh, I have discussed in the previous slide here, uh, this is our linear quadratic equation. Um, so uh, I have to go a little slow. Uh, so I will give it time for the slides to update on your computers. So. Now we, in our problem, uh, number of fractions is 25 and dose is two gray and then alpha beta ratio is uh, 10 gray. So B, by putting these values in our equation, we have uh, N is 25, D is two, and then one is from the equation. Again, D is two and alpha beta ratio is 10. So we get 
a result of 60 when we solve this BED. Now we will come to the second part of the equation. Um, now we have BED of 60 and we are going to deliver 1.6 uh, gray or 160 centigrade to pa patient instead of 200 centigrade. Again, alpha beta will be 10, uh, the ratio will be 10 uh, uh, for tumor. And this time we want to see what number of fractions should we deliver so our dose becomes equivalent to 200 centigrade. When we rearrange the same equation um, slightly, uh, uh, I will go back, I should have put it here. Um, and uh, I will give a couple of seconds. So if you see now, we want to solve this equation for N. Um, now everything else will go to the left hand side of this equation and we want to solve for N. So all this section of the equation from D and uh, all this section will go into the division on the left hand side. So equation will be B E divided by D into one plus D by alpha beta. So it will be uh, B E D. Uh, uh, again, I hope the uh, slides uh, have updated on your screens. Um, it will be BED divided by um, the dose into one plus dose divided by alpha beta ratio. So now we, we have a question. Uh, sorry. We have a question uh, from an audience that is, uh, uh, sure. what are the reason one would change from two gray to 1.6 gray? Uh, sometime um, there are different tumor types uh, for which a different dose is recommended. Uh, sometime you may, may want to increase the dose fractionation because the patient has some other very urgent appointment and uh, um, uh, the patient want to finish the treatment earlier instead of waiting. Let's say it's a prostate patient. Now we are treating prostate patients in 25, 26 fractions. Uh, or 27 fractions, but previously the treatment could go from 40 to 45 fractions. So if a prostate patient requests that I cannot come for 45 or this is, these are nine weeks, uh, I have to go out of the country, then you can use this equation to, to see what will deliver, give him the treatment in uh, 45 fractions, treatment in 30, or currently we are regularly doing these fractions for prostate. So there can be different scenarios that can arrive. Um, and there can, uh, then there can be a research uh, like uh, for breast uh, in um, uh, HDR breast treatments, uh, when we do a SEVI or Contura treatment, we do 340 times two in 10 fractions. So that is very accelerated. Uh, and uh, the dose is 340 times two every day delivered at six hours per fraction. So there can be different reasons that we can go from one dose to the other dose. Uh, and in order to go from one dose to the other dose, we have to check the BED equivalence. Like we just cannot decide that, okay, instead of 200, we will deliver 250 per fraction for the same number of fractions because now the number of fractions will not be the same. We have to change the number of fractions for the dose to be biologically equivalent. Uh, I hope uh, I cleared your question. Uh, if you still yes, want sir. some more clarification. Uh, yes, if you guys still you. want. We can, done? we can have the review at the end if someone want, want to. Okay. So now, um, uh, so uh, here um, we got an N of, uh, when we solved our equation, we got an N, uh, which is the number of fractions of 32, 32.33. Uh, 32 so uh, we rounded down to 32. If it was 0.5 or uh, greater than 0.5, we should have rounded it up. Uh, so this is 32.33 by rounding it, we get 32. So now we will give the patient 160 centigrade, 160 centigrade for 32 fractions and that will give us 5120 centigrade. So, so now remember, we started with 200 times 25, which was 5000 centigrade in 25 fractions. But when we changed our dose per fraction, our number of fractions changed. And by changing our number of fractions, we are changing the total dose to the patient also. 
So whenever um, the fractionation changes, uh, if the patient wants or if uh, there is some research going on, do check it with this equation. This is, uh, this is called a linear quadratic equation and check that the doses are uh, biologically equivalent uh, before uh, giving those doses to the patient. And uh, if there is some research regimen, make sure that uh, someone is not going wild just because they want to uh, deliver a, a specific dose. Uh, there has to be some science behind it. If we want to go for prostate, if we want to go from 180 per fraction to 270 per, per fraction, uh, by the way, these days 270 per fraction is a common dose in 27 fractions. So there has to be some reason, like I cannot say that uh, instead of 180, I will start delivering 500 centigrade, centigrade per fraction. Um, uh, usually uh, a lot of um, research goes behind that before making something mainstream. Now, um, now, as I said, we will, after discussing those problems, we will come back to the basics and then we will go 360 degrees around and we will come back to our problems. So radiobiology, um, it combines the basic principles of physics and biology and discuss the action of ionizing radiation on biological tissues and living organisms. Cell um, is the smallest unit of protoplasm that can exist independently. So anything smaller than cell cannot exist independently. Um, a pro protoplasm in turn consists of organic or inorganic compounds dissolved or suspended in water. Then these cells, they combine to make up a tissue. Tissue is a group of cells that perform one or more functions together. So for example, our eye is a tissue, a lot of groups, a lot of cells group together to make an eye and it performs the function of receiving light. Similarly, um, uh, if we look at other, our muscles, uh, our muscles perform a specific, specific function. Kidneys, liver, then uh, different organs in our body are, are tissues. Those are group of cells um, that, have, uh, that are combined and then they do a specific function. These tissues performing functions together, um, I don't know where I got these red lines on these slides. These tissues performing functions together becomes an organ and a group of organs that perform one or more functions is an organism or organic, organic system. So in, in case of humans, if you see muscles, eyes, all these different organisms in our body, they come to, together to make up our body and um, we, uh, we are an organism or an organic system. And then radiobiology, um, uh, as we talked about humans and in radiobiology, in our radiobiology, we will be talking more about humans. So humans have somatic or germ cells. Germ cells are spawns or eggs. Their division is called meiosis. All other cells, uh, all other cells other than the germ cells in any other tissue or organ are somatic. And the division in a somatic cell is called mitosis. Mitosis results in two identical daughter cells. Then there are thread-like part of the cell. Uh, uh, in a cell, uh, if you can see in the background, we have a thread kind of a structure. Uh, um, uh, it's kind of a ladder uh, that carries hereditary information from parents to their kids to the next generation. And uh, this is in the form of genes. These are called chromosomes uh, like here, uh, we have a chromosome and chromosome, um, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 pairs are non-sex chromosomes and one pair is sex chromosome. And then DNA is the smallest part that together with proteins form a chromosome. So um, here uh, in the background, I have a picture. Uh, we have uh, a, like some DNA strain that is going on and all these DNAs combined to make a chromosome. Our target in radiation oncology is basically the DNA inside the chromosome. So when we are treating some patient uh, and we will discuss it in detail. So we are trying to hit the DNA uh, inside the cell, inside the nucleus of the cell. So we um, uh, make the DNA uh, uneffective and uh, kill the cell so that the cancerous cells can die. Classification of radiation. Um, 
usually radiation are classified in two main categories, uh, non-ionizing and ionizing. Non-ionizing um, is a visible spectrum, um, uh, the seven colors that we can see with our eye, and then infrared spectrum, microwaves, and radio waves. These are the example of non-ionizing radiation. In ionizing radiation, uh, we have X-rays, gamma rays, um, uh, all these uh, alpha, beta particles, those are ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation can be of two um, types. One is directly ionizing, uh, like charged particles, electrons, protons, alpha particles, and heavy ions. Uh, and then we have indirectly ionizing particles, uh, which are neutral particles like photons and neutrons. And then uh, when these um, ionizing particles uh, uh, move through a human body or move through a tissue, um, they deposit energy. Uh, and that energy is called, there is a term to define the deposit of energy and it is called linear energy transfer. So remember one thing, uh, historically in radiobiology, the experiments were done with 250 kilo electron volts of X-rays. So when we are talking of biologically equivalent dose, we compare the dose uh, that will create the same effects at that 250 kilo electron volt of X-rays were creating. And the other thing is um, when we are uh, specific, especially when radiobiologists, when radiobiologists are talking about cells we are talking about a very small part. So instead of meters or centimeters or millimeters, we talk about micrometers. So in radio, radiobiology, we will be talking about micrometers and nanometers, and um, uh, we will be talking about cells. And the comparison of our doses uh, and everything will be to 250 kilo electron volt of energy of X-rays. So LET, uh, linear energy transfer, uh, it focuses attention on the linear rate of energy absorption by the absorbing medium uh, as the charged particles traverses the medium. So ICRU defines it as uh, LET of charged particles in a medium is the quotient of DE by DL. So when we divide the energy, uh, DE, the average energy, when we divide it by the length that the that the particle has traversed into, into a medium, the energy locally imparted to the medium by a charged particle of specified energy traversing a distance of dl. And the unit of it will be kilo electron volts per micrometer. As I said, um, all the experiments were done on 250 keV uh, X-rays machines. So we have a unit of kilo electron volt and our target will be cells, DNA, and uh, all those small particles. So we will be talking in terms of micrometers and nanometers instead of millimeters and meters. Any questions so far? Sir, we will take question at the end of the At the session. end, okay. <laughs> uh, so th these are different LET values just for reference um, for 250 uh, kVp X-rays, uh, LET will be two. Cobalt 60 gamma rays, it's 0.3 MeV, uh, three MeV X-rays, it's 0.3, and one MeV electrons, it's 0.25. If we go to less common radiation, uh, 14 MeV neutrons, now these are neutrons, uh, very heavy particles, um, uh, their LET is 12. They deposit a lot of energy when they are traversing through some medium. Heavy charge particles like alpha can be 100 to 200 uh, or deutrons. Then one kilo electron volt of electrons is 12.3 and 10 kilo volt of electrons is 2.3. So you see as the speed increases, the LET decreases. So um, when, when the speed of uh, any, uh, if we think of uh, radiation X-rays, uh, for low energy X-rays, uh, photoelectric effect is uh, common. And as the energy increases, uh, we, get, we get into the uh, Compton scattering. So, so the energy deposition becomes less and less as the uh, energy of the incident particle increases. And here you can see for one kilo electron volts, our LET is more than the uh, 10 kilo electron volts. 
cell cycle and cell death. So time between successive divisions is called a cell cycle time. So let's say a cell divided now and then it divided six hours later, these six hours will be cell cycle and during these six hours, the cell will be going through different phases in its lifetime. So uh, mainly the cell has two time periods uh, and then there are two gaps. So four different phases. The time periods, uh, one is mitosis where the cell is actually dividing. And then there is a time period of DNA synthesis, which is called S phase. In S phase, a lot of synthesis, a lot of reactions, chemical reactions are going on in the cell. Then between the division phase and between the synthesis phase, we have two gaps. So after the mitosis, the gap is called G1. Uh, there are two gaps, G1 and G2. Uh, after the mitosis, the gap is G1. And then after the S phase, the gap is called G2. So the, in mammalian cells, um, uh, this is the, like this whole cell cycle is of the order of 10 to 20 hours. Then um, uh, again, uh, continuing the discussion of cell cycle and cell death, the M phase, uh, which is uh, the division phase is usually less than one hour. So uh, in a cell, in a mammalian cell, it, the cell will divide uh, within an hour once it starts the division phase. Then comes the G1 to G, uh, G1 gap. So here you can see uh, on the top, we have the mitosis where the cell is dividing. So this is about one hour. Then we have G1. So in this cell, in this phase, cell is kind of sitting idle. It is not doing anything. Um, and it can be from one to eight hours. Then we have S phase, uh, synthesis phase, where uh, this, uh, a lot of synthesis, a lot of chemical reactions are going on in the cell. And this can be from six to eight hours. Then we have the second gap. Again, the cell is sitting idle in the gap two. Uh, nothing, uh, a lot is not going on. And it can be from two to four hours. So, but in certain tissues, cell cycles can be up to 10 days. Uh, like in most of the tissues, uh, this is true. But in certain tissues, uh, cell cycles can be longer. Cells are more radio sensitive. So this is for us, uh, the radiation professionals. The cells are more radio sensitive in M phase or late G2 phase. So when cell uh, in its uh, all in its uh, cycle, when cells reach late G2 phase or M phase, uh, that is the time to hit it. When we hit a cell in these uh, phases with radiation, we are going to get more success. And they are more radio resistant in the late S phase. So in the late S phase, uh, if we are hitting with radiation, we are actually not doing anything to the cell. Again, continuing the same topic, uh, cell cycle time for malignant cells is shorter than some normal tissue cells. So malignant cells can cycle quickly um, as compared to normal tissues. But if someone get injured, uh, injured uh, mm -hmm. if someone gets an injury, then during regeneration, normal cells can also proliferate faster. So for, and for stem cells, uh, cell death means um, uh, other cells capable of division is defined as the loss, loss of re reproductive integrity. So when we talk of cell death for stem cells, that, uh, that would mean um, that its reproductive integrity is severed, like the cell cannot divide itself. So we did hit the cell um, and uh, we crippled the cell, but it will be there uh, in the tissue for, for some time, but it will not be able to reproduce. So that means the cell has died. For non-proliferating for non proliferating static cells, death is the loss of a specific function. So for cells that, that are proliferating or that are capable of uh, making colonies, when they stop reproducing, we say that the cell has died. And the cells that do not proliferate, that do not divide, when they lose their function, we say that the cell has died. So when we are radiating cells, when, when radiation hit the cell, 
first the standard physical effect between radiation and the atoms or molecules of the cell occur and the st standard physical effect can be photoelectric effect or Compton scattering or pair production. So when the radiation hit human skin or in terms of tumor, when they hit tumor, one of these effects will start happening. And when we talk of DNA, damage to DNA causes the biological effect of radiation. So once the radiation goes and it affects the DNA, it, it damages the DNA, that is the biological effect. Thus radiation induced cell killing is because of the damage inside cell nucleus and not in cytoplasm. So a human cell has a nucleus uh, and I think all animal cells have a nucleus, a well-defined nucleus and then area outside that nucleus is cytoplasm. So our target in radiation is the cell nucleus. Uh, remember, so when we are hitting the cell in cytoplasm, uh, the radiation may interact with water inside the cytoplasm and creates uh, create some radicals and ions and those radicals and ions in turn will go and hit the genes or, or radiation can go directly and hit the uh, DNA and uh, inside the cell nucleus. Our target is cell nucleus and we are not aiming for cytoplasm. There are other sites within the cell when damage may lead to cell death, but very rare. So any other site inside the cell will very rarely uh, damage the cell. Our main target will be cell nucleus. We want to hit the DNA inside the nucleus in order to uh, get rid of the tumor. So uh, we have clonogenic cell. Uh, so when a cell survives and uh, can reproduce, uh, that cell is called clonogenic cell. Clonogenic cell is a surviving cell that can reproduce and proliferate into a large number of progeny. So that means when we are hitting the cancer of a patient, when we are hitting the tumor, and we are unable to get rid of all the cancerous cells, there may be some cells that are clonogenic. And those cells then start reproducing again. And this is the scenario of recurrence. When, when some patient comes back with a tumor in the same site, that is the failure of our treatment, unfortunately. And that has happened because some cells survived. Those cells were clonogenic and they started reproducing after the treatment and a recurrence occurred in the patient. This capability of a single cell growing into large colony shows that the cell has retained its reproductive integrity or we were not able to kill the DNA um, or hit the DNA with sufficient radiation. Usually 100 gray is required to destroy cell, cell function in non-proliferating uh, cells and two gray for proliferating cells. So when ionizing radiation hits the cell, damage can occur as a result of one of the following two mechanisms. One is a direct hit and one is an indirect hit. In an indirect hit, when, when the radiation hit the cell, it interacts with, for example, with water inside the cell, it creates uh, some uh, ions and radicals and those ions and radicals in turn uh, hit the DNA and breaks the strand of the DNA. That is called the indirect hit. And when the electrons, uh, uh, when the gamma ray photons emit an electron uh, from the atom outside, outside of the cell and that electron goes and directly interacts with the uh, DNA and damages the DNA, that is a direct hit. So we can either damage the DNA by a direct hit or indirect hit. In direct hit, which is A, the direct hit, the radiation interacts directly with the critical target in the cell, uh, like DNA, as we talked about. Direct action is the dominant process in the interaction of high LET particles. So when we are treating with high LET particles like neutrons or alpha particles, and uh, these days we have proton accelerators also, uh, those are very expensive. Um, so. Uh, when we are treating with those high LET particles, uh, basically our action is the direct hit. We are mainly hitting the DNA directly. Indirect hit, which is the B here, causes the radiation to interact with atoms of the target. So 
the radiation will interact with atoms inside the target, inside the cell, like water, uh, and they will interact, say, through Coulomb interaction, leading to a chain of events that eventually produce biological damage. A, a chain of events, there are some chemical reactions uh, I will discuss in the coming slides. And indirect action is caused by X-rays or gamma ray photons. So some possible radiochemical reactions, um, as I said, uh, we are going to discuss some possible uh, chemical reactions. When water um, uh, gets hit by radiation, it can create, uh, it, it emits an electron and it leaves the water molecule positive. So, so this positive water molecule and electron, they can go and hit the DNA. Similarly, uh, the positive uh, water molecule, it can create a hydroxyl radical and a hydrogen, uh, I, uh, a hydrogen ion, uh, a positive uh, hydrogen ion, which can then interact with the DNA. Or when photons uh, interact with water, they can create a hydrogen radical and a hydroxyl radical. And these radicals can then cause the damage inside the nucleus. We can, when we are hitting the DNA, we can have a single strain break or a double strain break. So a double strain break basically will hit the DNA such that it will break in the same area on both sides. DNA has two strains. So it will break both the strains and the DNA will break and that will mean the D DNA or cell DNA damage and a cell eventual cell death. If a single strain is broken, the cell can repair itself. So a single strain break can be repaired, but with a double strain break, we can get the uh, permanent damage. And that is our aim to get permanent damage to the cell. So um, uh, this is a very important concept uh, when, we, uh, when we go through radiobiology. Uh, and so remember these uh, single strain break and the double strain break idea, uh, we will be discussing it later also. So in these equations, the highly reactive species produced in water through radiochemical reactions are electrons, uh, hydroxyl and hydrogen radicals. After reacting and damaging the molecule in the cell, these ion and radicals create the indirect damage. So as we discussed, when, um, when our radiation that we are bombarding on the patient, when they interact with the tissues uh, with, the, with the cell, they interact with the water molecules inside the cell. And those water mo molecules are broken into ions and uh, radicals. And, and those ions and radicals then create the indirect damage for us. So when we are irradiating, two thirds of the biological damage by low LET radiation like X-rays, electrons, or photons is due to indirect action and one third is due to direct action. So when we are treating in our clinics with uh, electrons or with photons, mostly in most of the clinics, we have X-rays and electrons, we are creating the indirect action 66% uh, per of the time and direct action 33% of the time. The steps involved in indirect action, uh, as we discussed, primary photon interaction, which will uh, create one of these effects. Uh, and then it produces a high energy electron or positron. The high energy light charged particle produces free radicals in water while moving through tissue. And then these free radicals may produce chemical changes in DNA by breaking the chemical bonds. The changes in chemical bonds result in biological effects. The time scale involved, um, so from, from starting to hit the cell, uh, cancer cell, or, or we are hitting the normal cells also when we are treating, to the end biological effect, we can define it in five steps. Uh, two steps are physics, then we have the steps of chemistry, and then we have the step of biology. So the first physics step is incident X-ray photon uh, to production of fast electron or positron. So when our photon hits the skin or the cell, and um, it start interacting, that is 10 power minus 15 seconds. So within 10 power minus 15 seconds, the reaction starts. Then when it, in this reaction, in this 10 power minus 15 seconds, 
it eliminates electrons or positrons and those electrons or positrons create radicals, ion radicals, and they have a lifetime of 10 power minus 10 seconds. Then the chemistry starts inside the cell, free radicals are produced and those free radicals um, uh, are highly reactive because they, uh, they have one electron or they have a, in their outer uh, shell, they have a free electron available, which is highly reactive. So these uh, free radicals have a lifetime of about 10 power minus five seconds. Then breakage of bonds. So um, uh, covalent bond of I I or ionic bond, the step between breakage of bonds and the biological effects taking place. Now this step, uh, when the bonds started breaking, it can take hours, days or years. And once the bones start breaking, that result in the bio biological effect. So actually it's a combination of physics, chemistry and biology when we are radiating cells and our physics and chemistry are short time periods. But once we get to the point where we are now awaiting the results of our work, that can be long. So that can be hours, days or years. Uh, okay, sir, we then, have to stop here. I think we have the last slide after uh, this. So we will stop for today's session and continue the session for tomorrow. For Hello? tomorrow, okay. Okay, so, so we um, will now take questions. Yeah, and, and I think new our session tomorrow from this. Uh, slide. Okay, and I I can take questions today also if based on the today's slide if someone have questions. So yes, and I think are, this is a good point also to write. We will okay. Allow Let everyone. me discuss this one. This is the last slide. Okay, sir. You okay, continue. everyone have questions. <laughs> you, okay. you can continue, sir. After this um, slide, you will take questions. Uh, yeah, actually, this this slide is kind of the end of the uh, discussion that we just did. So uh, it discusses the effects of our work when we okay. work so hard and we uh, and we hit the tumor with radiation. What can be the possible outcomes? One is no effect, <laughs> which will be uh, like uh, uh, sometimes that happens, and uh, instead of uh, shrinking, the tumor start growing, and we we are just helpless at that time and we just pray to God. Uh, apoptosis, um, the cell dies before it can divide. One of the processes in the cell cells that happen is when the cells get ready to divide, the cell checks its integrity. There is a specific gene in the cells. That gene is responsible for checking the integrity of the cell. And if the cell is not fit to divide and grow, that gene generates a signal and the cell kills itself. That process is called apoptosis. So the, that cell dies before it can divide. And yes, you can guess it, that, that specific gene that is responsible for deciding if the cell is able to divide or not, when that gene is damaged, then the cell loses its sense and the cell don't know whether it's fit, it is fit to divide or not, and it keep on dividing, and that is cancer. So when that specific gene in the cell that makes the decision at the division time is affected, cell becomes a cancerous cell. So apoptosis can happen when we are hitting the uh, cells. Um, one of the process that can happen inside the cells is apoptosis. The cell decides whether it's fit or not, and if it checks that the cell itself that it is not fit, it just dies before it can divide. Then reproductive failure. The cell goes in the phase of division, it decides to divide, but the cell dies when attempting reproduction. There can be genomic instability. There is a delay in reproductive failure. So uh, the cell can keep on, like it will still, it decides that it is not fit to divide, but it go on dividing and the reproductive failure uh, is delayed. So after some successive multiplications, the cell may die. Mutation, the cell survives, but contains a mutation. That is, we hit the DNA, we hit a single strand, the, cells, the cell repairs itself, but while repairing, something happens and the cell repairs itself wrongly. And that wrong repair of the cell is called mutation. Transformation. The mutation uh, uh, that we just discussed leads to a transformed phenotype and possibly 
carcinogenesis. So the mutation that happens in the cell can be cancerous. Bystander effect. Sometimes these affected cells can send a signal to their neighboring cells and induce genetic damage in them. That's very scary. <laughs> and then adaptive response, the cell becomes more radio resistant. Sometimes when the cell, uh, like when we hit a cell and it repairs itself uh, through single damage and we keep doing single, dam single strain damage, the cell keep repairing itself, the, the cell become radio resistant in the, in the sense that it, its ability to repair its damage becomes better and better and it becomes sensitive to radiation. So these are the effects that can happen after we irradiate cell. And, um, and that will, here we will conclude our session today, inshallah, tomorrow we will talk in detail about, uh, uh, I will try to discuss the uh, uh, survival fractionation, survival fraction uh, curve also, that is important uh, when we go back to our uh, delay and alpha beta calculation equations that we discussed earlier. So now we can take questions. So um, before taking question, uh, I would like to, for PowerPoint presentation, uh, kindly email to MP. Uh, the, uh, I email have emailed to it to Asad, them. yes. Uh, no, I sir, have emailed email to, provide to MPTP platform. Uh, oh, I can I email it to these, okay. I no, will sir, do that. Um, not you, I am asking the audience for oh, PowerPoint sorry. presentation. <laughs> Kindly email your profile at mptp.pakistan at gmail.com and also fill the feedback form. Link will be shared at the end of the session. Presentation will be shared on Monday, inshallah. No, sir, we, have, we can take the questions. So anyone yes, want we to can ask? Take Hello, I am Asad Zamir. Hi, Hello, Asad Zamir. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> well, How are you? Yeah, uh, fine. This uh, presentation was very informative because yeah, most of so us much. don't. Yeah, in Pakistan, most of us basically uh, don't have too much idea about the radio biology. Uh, by this presentation, we can improve ourselves. I have only one or two questions. Sure. Uh, what about the uh, radio by uh, uh, radio surgery? Means in radio surgery, we make most of the plan on isodose line. So right. sometimes we used doses 500, 600, 700. So uh, there, how we will calculate the gap? Yeah. Is it so the Asad, same, yeah. same method? If, is, if it is the same method, then is there any guideline or reference that we can reference to anyone? So, yes, we are yeah. using this guideline to uh, calculate the gap. So uh, let me tell you one interesting thing, Asad, here. Um, um, in, when we are doing SBRT and SRS, we are using the concept of tissue ablation. So what yeah. we are doing is, uh, and inshallah tomorrow when we discuss the four hours of radiobiology, um, uh, uh, please uh, have, uh, I think uh, if we, you all can sit with me tomorrow and if we go beyond one hour, I think that will be good for all of us because I want to discuss these concepts. We okay. give time and to, other... uh, no, let me, <laughs> let me complete the answer. Uh, so we Sorry. give time to normal cells. Uh, we give time to normal cells to repair themselves before hitting them again the next day, uh, the concept of fractionation. Uh, but in SRS and SBRT, we use the concept of tissue ablation. Ablation means we are just destroying them. We are just killing them. So SRS is a single fraction. Um, uh, when, when the tumor is less than two centimeter, we go to 2000 uh, in brain, we go to 2400 centigrade. And if it's bigger than two centimeters, say we can decide to go to 1800 centigrade because we are looking at uh, D12 also. So we are looking at the other parameters, but this SBRT and SRS treatment, unfortunately we don't have any radiobiological data for that. So based on our survival fractionation and our curves and uh, based on the fractionated scheme, we cannot explain SBRT and SRS. We are basically in these concepts or in these treatments, we are just destroying the cancerous tissue. We are hitting it with, you can say we are hitting with a hammer. Uh, and uh, as in Urdu, we say, um, so sunarki ek loharki. This is the one from Lohar. <laughs> we are just okay. uh, destroying it. <laughs> okay. okay. What is your second yeah. question? 
second question uh, is uh, about transformation because nowadays people are talking about the squi squi squidal cells means they are transforming some kind of like stem cells squidal cells and such kind of things like it's it's belong to the uh, immune therapy you can say so right what do you think is there any difference between them because we are mostly working on the radiation but maybe in uh, in future 10 year or 8 year uh, we skip the radiation we just uh, start to doing the immune uh, immune therapy and such kind of thing because yeah. there is very less side effects in targeted or yeah. immune uh, therapy so yeah so uh, actually what happened asad is like this concept of uh, getting rid of all the radiation is a very old concept in 1990s internationally when the computers became uh, available uh, commonly they started developing uh, uh, you may have heard of that project when they were working on developing i think the gene model and everyone yeah. was was so hopeful when this gene model is complete cancer will be history because as i said there is a gene in the cell that decides that uh, if the cell is fit to go into division or not so if we know about that gene and we can control that gene cancer is gone but the problem is uh, th this idea have been i mean i think uh, uh, for as long as radiation has lived this idea has lived that one day radiation will be history but this has not happened yet <laughs> and when i joined the field when i was young back in 95 um this was the concept that one day radiation treatment will be gone and we have to take some other uh, for our uh, personal things we have to take some other uh, field so but now i am yeah, we so are the last our... question is uh -huh. right yeah because we are a physicist we can fit everywhere my last question is exactly, regarding yeah. uh, different uh -huh. organs like uh, <laughs> when we talk about the gap calculation so our, during gap during gap calculation should we consider the organs like uh, you put the same formula for brain same formula and same factors for prostate same for lungs so is there any uh, delay factor or such, such kind of factor that we can use during calculation so there is another uh, concept for delay um, uh, that is sasic and bony um, i am trying to get my hands on that paper but i couldn't find that paper they are using the alpha beta equation and they have introduced a concept of k uh, a constant k yes um, which k. is uh, uh, yeah uh, so yes. that uh, exactly yeah. so that k will uh, it's kind of a delay factor in uh, in the sasic and bony uh, linear quadratic equation but at the end both the equations uh, the delay uh, equation that i discussed and the sasic and bony um uh, linear quadratic model they predict more or less the same decay or delay so um so it wouldn't matter uh, it wouldn't affect your calculations a lot if you use one or other if i get if i get my hands on sasic and bony uh, i will create an excel sheet for that also but until then um, and there is a little difference we are using the same here also whenever my physicians ask me to calculate decay uh, or delay uh, i use the same excel sheet so uh, you guys can uh, like uh, solidly use it i want to ask one more thing in continuity with this question uh, uh -huh. suppose when you you calculate the doses with the gap calculation then if you are delivering 200 cg by per day after gap right. calculation suppose you you calculated 220 so right. should we make a new plan for this dose or we just uh, put with the addition of 20 cgy with the previous yeah, plan? yeah actually with uh, uh, mostly with pinnacle and eclipse these days uh, they are controlling the machines so yes we have to create a new plan because uh, what eclipse is doing these days is they have made it very difficult for us we have to retire the old plane create the new plane and then make that new plane like treatment approve and uh, uh, there is there are two kind of approvals for that uh, one in my dosimetry does and i do the, i do the treatment approval so when we treatment approve it then it is deliverable so if you only do like uh, increase the dose to 220 the mus are definitely going to change and uh if you and and uh, i would recommend that most of the centers should have a verify and control system uh, like uh, aria or mosaic 
so if you are using aria or mosaic they have to use the the plane from the computer to deliver that treatment so the answer is yes we have to create a new plane okay and, so uh, if someone and, don't want to create new plan uh, it's easy just, uh, yeah let me tell you something yeah yeah okay okay continue uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, what you can do is if even if you have an imrt plan change the dose and instead of reoptimizing recalculate that will save you time also and your parameters are the same your code doses everything is the same uh, you have just Recalculated for 220 instead of 200. Uh, Asad, why can we take a question of other participants? Yes, yes. Why not? Because they, they are waiting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank uh, you, uh, it Thank was you. nice talking to you, Asad Zamir. Um, uh, I have uh, talked to you on cell phone. Uh, Same to you. Thank uh, you. Sometimes. All right. So next yeah. question: If uh, anybody have the, the any question, he can uh, unmute himself and ask the question. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Badar, and I'm a radiation oncologist. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, refreshing our knowledge regarding radiobiology. I have just uh, a small query uh, regarding the uh, linear quadratic model. Uh, till what fraction size does it hold? Like we use the fraction size usually the conventional 1800 or two, uh, 1.8 or two gray. Uh, yes. Uh, but in cases of some palliative radiotherapy, we also use eight gray single fraction. So does it hold till then? So it holds up to 600 centigrade. You can use it very confidently up to 600 centigrade. Uh, but 800 centigrade in a single fraction, I think, uh, and Dr. Badar, uh, you may know better than me, that we are going into the phase of tissue ablation. And we are talking when we are talking about tissue ablation, um, then we uh, then our radio radiobiological models fail, <laughs> or or they are not predicting anything as of today. So when right. we are delivering 800 yeah. centigrade in one fraction, um, that's kind of tissue ablation. Right, we we actually use it in the palliative uh, setting, and uh, that too within the constraints of the tissue organ and uh, for the time constraints actually. Uh, but most of the times we are using 30 gray in 10 fractions or 20 gray in uh, five fractions for the palliative setting. So right, uh, right. very rarely yeah, so 8 gray single fraction is used. Yeah. So 600, like um, uh, the textbook says uh, that we can use it confidently up to 600. Um, I have yeah. done 800 myself, like I have seen 800 myself. So it's not yeah. something out of ordinary. And I think um, we can still use the equation for 800, uh, but for 600, um, that's recommended by textbooks. And 800, there is a need uh, and definitely some patients need it, but that will be the gray area. But definitely uh, we should use it uh, when, when some patient need it, we have to deliver it. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Badr, and uh, thank you for attending the physicist uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always a teamwork, sir. It's always a teamwork. Exactly. It's always a teamwork. Thank you, sir. Do, do you have any other question? You can unmute your uh, voice and ask the question. Hello. 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 I, I have a question. Uh, sure. I'm, I, you mentioned uh, both proliferating and non-proliferating cells. Could you kindly mm -hmm. give examples of what these cells are? And then secondly, could you, how would you be able to know when a cell is at the M phase or the G2 phase? Because you said this is when they're more radiosensitive. How can you be able to tell when they're at this phase? Okay. So, um, uh, Dr. Badar, uh, can you come to my help here for uh, explaining <coughs> proliferating and uh, non-proliferating cells? Uh, and then I will come to the point to your second part of your question. Uh, right. In general terms, the cells which have uh, shorter lives and uh, they are uh, continuously dividing, uh, 
they are usually the germline cells like in ovaries and testes in uh, in cases of males uh, for that reason uh, the uh, dosage uh, the overall dosage to these organs are very low as low as uh, probably 1 to 2 gray uh, to destroy completely uh, these organs however the uh, the neuronal cells of the brain and the bone cells uh, they are uh, usually the ones which are resistant uh resistant in terms because they are con uh, not continuously dividing or they are kind of a, in in a shield in a in a cell bunker you say uh and uh, they needed higher doses of radiation uh to to get the effects sir thank you so much dr badar uh, and what was the second part of your question sorry the second part was you mentioned the cell is more radio sensitive in the m phase and the okay. g2 phase yeah. how so, can you so actually to yeah phase? so we actually when we are delivering radiation at that time we don't have a way to know uh, how many cells are in which stage so that's why we go to fractionation and please attend the tomorrow session uh, uh, i will be discussing the four r's of radiobiology so after this, those discussions it will be more clear to you that the reason we go for fractionation instead of a single fraction is to, to wait for those cells which are in let's say in g1 phase or s s phase and which are not ready uh, for radiation hit we wait for them to go through the cycle and go into late g2 phase or m phase so they will be good uh, for for our hit so that's one of the reasons for uh, our fractionation to wait for the cells to go through their cycle and get and be ready for our uh, treatment so definitely we don't have a way to uh, there are billions of cells uh, when we are hitting a tumor and we don't have a way to predict about every individual cell and at the same time uh, we have to kill every individual cell All right. Thank you. Um, so, another um, question. The link for tomorrow's. <laughs> I, uh, Hello. Uh -huh. uh, I think Asad, Asad has. Uh, Asad. Uh, no, I think it's a different link. But uh, Asad, uh, Asad Yusuf, uh, have you shared that link? Yes, sir. We will be sharing uh, the link for tomorrow's session, inshallah, in a while. Oh, okay. So you will email it to everyone. Yes, we will email it to everyone okay. who is present here. Thank you so much. I am posting in the uh, in the chat box right now too, and we will also send a reminder for that. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. Um, I'm resident of radiation oncology from Aachan. I have a question regarding uh, dose calculation. As we discussed sure. earlier in the presentation uh, regarding dose calculation of uh, gap uh, for the tumor uh, tissues, now what about right. uh, uh, normal uh, tissues like late effects and uh, uh, normal and the acute effects? Uh, what about the calculation for them? So when we are uh, talking about gap calculations and as we do fractionation so we are actually taking care of the normal tissues at that time and because of the gap the normal tissues have definitely uh, rep uh, repaired themselves so that is one part the second part is when we increase the dose uh, i think you uh, your worry will be that when, once we increase the dose we are hitting the normal tissue yes. more uh, so we like don't go crazy about increasing the dose like we can increase is from 200 to 210 or 220 but if the gap is longer and let's say we we go let me let me go back to one thing if that the gap is 10 days or 10 days or 20 days then the delay uh, uh, factor will give us a uh, a decay of uh, maybe 60 centigrade or 70 centigrade so we can add those those 60 or 70 centigrade to to the remaining days and and increase the dose from 200 to 205 or 210 but if the the remaining dose becomes 170 180 or 200 then we deliver that as a separate fraction we don't go like over like we don't go to 250 per fraction or 240 per fraction to increase the dose widely we will just add another fraction so adding that another fraction will be a day uh, uh, between the uh, last plain treatment and the additional treatment and that day will give sufficient time to normal cells to repair themselves 
I hope that answered your question. All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, sir, I have a question. Could I ask? Uh, sure, yes. All right, sir. What I've understood from your answer is uh, uh, the remaining dose uh, might be delivered in an other fraction or two. Yeah. Uh, could we deliver? Uh, could we do in? Uh, I mean, to ask, could we increase uh, some dose? Let's say uh, we were going with two gram fraction. Could we go with two ten cg by two hundred and ten cg by a fraction? Uh, would right. that be yes. equivalent? Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you have a lot of fractions, let's say you have eight fractions left, and the decay is eighty centigrade. The, de uh, the delay is 80 centigrade. So we can add these 10 to the remaining eight fractions and we can deliver two, 210 uh, to every day. So uh, like it will be the team decision between uh, physicists and physicians, they can sit together and decide um, how much we can increase the dose safely. Like let's say, do, do we need to go to 220 because what will be the biological effects of 220 on normal tissues? If not, then um, if our delay is 170 or 180 or 200, we can deliver that as a separate fraction. So it will be good. If our delay is up to 150, 200, we can deliver a separate fraction. But if it is less than that, and we have a lot of remaining days, we can spread that to throw the remaining treatment. Uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Do you have any other questions? Kindly you can ask. Um, uh, I would uh, add one more thing. If I was speaking too fast uh, or uh, there was something that you guys would recommend for me to change, so frankly, uh, you uh, share on our uh, site that is MTP IT. Uh, yes, we have MPTP platform. MTP, uh, MPTP. So you can, uh, you can please uh, give your suggestions on MTPT. So uh, MPTP, I can change my way. If I am speaking too fast, I will smell it. Uh, if I'm not able to explain some of your questions, please ask them again or MPTP and uh, I will try to explain them in detail. And we tomorrow, have a question, um, sir. I, sir, we have a question from, okay, sure. I think, Radiation Oncology Training AKUH. Madam, you can ask your question. Uh, thank you, Jawad. This is uh, not a question. This is Dr. Bilal from Radiation Oncology, Aachan University. Uh, I want to thank you and all the organizers and Sir uh, Ahmed Ali sir, for organizing this talk and giving a very important highlight of this important topic, which is very pertinent to our patients uh, for especially for those uh, whom we treat with radical intent like squamous cell carcinoma of head and neck region and gynecological cancer because we know that uh, recurrence uh, rate is uh, whenever there is unintended treatment gap in between and the gap should be calculated to have comparable outcomes. So it was very useful for our entire team, not just the medical physicists, but all our radiation oncology residents, especially the first year residents uh, also attended and found it very useful. So thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Dr. Bilal. Thank you so much. Thank you, I really appreciate your kind comments. Any other question? I have shared uh, tomorrow's session link in the chat box and I will further also be sharing it on the WhatsApp. So uh, wants to copy from here, can copy from here for tomorrow's session and otherwise it all be shared in, on the WhatsApp. Okay, thank you, madam. Um, I think uh, it's uh, enough for today. Uh, we will uh, okay, join tomorrow and send. Javad, yes, um, uh, I have a request for tomorrow. I have, um, like, I would, uh, we will be discussing some important concepts tomorrow and uh, uh, some uh, very important things. Uh, so, if tomorrow, uh, if you guys uh, can sit with an intent to sit a little longer, 
I hope we will finish in time, but if not, um, uh, I want to like, for, especially for the students, I want them to have concepts. Uh, so tomorrow's discussion would be alpha beta ratios and all four hours of radiobiology and all those things. So uh, if we can sit uh, a little longer, uh, that will be great. So what we can do is um, for those of you um, who, who think that uh, one hour will be enough and they have some other appointments, they can leave and, um, and those students uh, and those colleagues uh, who want to sit and uh, stay with us for a little longer, uh, they are most welcome. And if uh, not possible, uh, we can arrange another session uh, again next week or in a couple of weeks and uh, we can talk to Asad Yusuf for that. Okay, sir, for sure. Uh, I think we have tomorrow we have the same timing and we will yes. uh, continue this, uh, the topic from the today's where we left. Mm. Thank you, sir, for your time. You spared Thank for you us. so much, we, everyone. Uh, we, we learned actually. Uh, <laughs> I always learn from my teacher and my mentor and today uh, my other participants are also here. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much everyone. Uh, thank you Javad and thank you everyone for joining me today and uh, listening to me <laughs> and inshallah uh, we will see each other tomorrow again. Assalamu alaikum. I, I think someone is asking okay. sir Mm, oh, okay. If you can, if you can, sure. wait just yeah, for one sure. Minute. No, sure. Uh, Asit Sab, if you can, if you can share the Excel sheet, uh, the links for tomorrow's session, and uh, the other things because uh, people will be waiting. Maybe they don't have, they are not added in our medical physics uh, group. Yes, uh, sir, Asad will be sharing it uh, to the participants. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Inshallah, now right. we'll catch you tomorrow, inshallah. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Inshallah, see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, everyone.